Hi, my name is Lisa Barcelos, and I am a professor of epidemiology and biostatistics in the School of Public Health at UC Berkeley. I'm co-leading this research study on COVID-19 in East Bay Area communities with my colleague, Eva Harris. We recently invited one adult from more than 350,000 households in 12 cities to participate in the initial screening phase. Now in phase two, we have randomly selected 5,500 individuals for testing and additional data collection. This will help us determine the prevalence of both current and past coronavirus infections in the East Bay and to monitor changes in the spread of infection over the next six to eight months. Please, if you can, take the time to watch the rest of this instructional video. We have put it together to help guide you through the oral, nasal, and blood sample collection that's needed to do the study. We wanna thank you for participating and for making this important research possible. Please don't hesitate to contact us at COVID-19 survey at berkeley.edu or by phone at 510-643-0580 if you have any concerns or questions. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Eva Harris and I'm a professor of infectious diseases in the School of Public Health at UC Berkeley. And I am co-leading this study of COVID-19 in the East Bay with my colleague, Lisa Barcelos. Uh, we think it's an important study for understanding risk factors for infection and importantly, uh, understanding safe ways to go back to our lives as we reopen society. And I just wanna add my thanks to Lisa's and thank you very, very much for participating in this important study with us. Hello. Thank you for participating in our Bay Area Coronavirus Study. Detailed instructions can be found within the sample collection kit. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us at covid19survey at berkeley.edu or call us at 510-643-0580. There's only very minimal discomfort from the application of the Lancet for blood collection, but it may be easier to have someone assist you. Please plan to collect your samples in the morning and allow up to 40 minutes from start to finish. The saliva collection kit contains the Omnigene Oral Saliva Collection Kit, the saliva Ziploc bag with absorbance paper, bubble wrap, rubber band, an alcohol wipe, and parafilm. The swabs collection kit contains the 2-inch binder clip, the swab Ziploc bag containing absorbance paper, two swabs, the paper ruler, the collection tube containing reagent, parafilm, an alcohol wipe, and bubble wrap and a rubber band. The blood collection kit contains the filter paper in the Ziploc bag, the plastic tube with orange cap for the used lancet, gauze, bandages, two lancets, alcohol wipes, and a large tissue. The return box contains the original shipping box to be reused, the biohazard bag, the sample info card to record the date and time of each sample collection, the return label, and packing tape. Reminder, please keep the box and be careful not to damage it so it can be reused to return your samples. For a FedEx pack return, these are your options. Give it to a FedEx truck driver, deposit it in a FedEx letterbox, drop off at Kinko's, drop off at FedEx stores, or drop off at Walgreens. Collection should be done first thing in the morning before eating, drinking, brushing, chewing gum, or using mouthwash. Thoroughly wash hands first. Use soap and water. Warning, the collection kit contains storage solution for your saliva sample. Do not ingest. Wash with water for 15 minutes if solution comes into contact with eyes or skin. Use provided spill kit. Do not use bleach. Take the saliva collection tube out of its packaging Spit into the funnel until the liquid, not the bubbles, reaches the fill line, as shown. Hold the tube upright with one hand, and with the other hand, close lid firmly until you hear a loud click. Make sure the lid is tightly closed. Carefully unscrew the funnel from the tube. Use the small cap to close the tube tightly. Shake the capped tube for 5 seconds. Then, discard the funnel. Wipe the outer surface of the tube with an alcohol wipe. 
Then gently stretch the piece of parafilm, then stretch it around the tube cap tightly to prevent leakage. Carefully wrap your saliva collection tube in the bubble wrap and secure tightly with the rubber band. Place your tube into the saliva Ziploc bag and seal it. Then place the saliva Ziploc bag inside of the biohazard bag. Record the date and time of your saliva collection on the info card. If a spill occurs, please put on the gloves provided in the spill kit. Place a piece of dry paper towel over the spill to soak up all of the solution. Then wipe down the area with several fresh paper towels twice with fresh water. Do not use bleach. Only use water to wash the area. Dry area with fresh paper towel. Remove the gloves, then bag all the contents of spill cleanup and dispose in trash. Collection should be done first thing in the morning. Thoroughly wash your hands first. Warning, the collection tube contains storage solution for your nasal swab. Do not touch or ingest. Wash with water for 15 minutes if solution comes into contact with your eyes or skin. Use the provided spill kit. Do not use bleach. Use the binder clip to place the tube upright during the sample collection. Retrieve the swabs from the swab Ziploc bag. Open the wrapper and without touching the swab tip, remove one swab. There is one extra swab in case it is needed. If not needed, you can discard. Gently insert the swab less than one inch, about two centimeters, into the nostril until resistance is met. Do not push too far. Rotate the swab gently several times against nasal wall. As you pull it out, rotate the swab around the inside of the nostril nair. Hold it in place 10 to 15 seconds to absorb nasal secretions, and then repeat in the other nostril using the same swab. Align the ruler with the end of the swab. Break off the swab handle by bending it at the end of the ruler. Discard the handle. Place the swab into the collection tube, submerging the tip in the solution. Warning, do not touch the liquid in the tube. If the liquid spills, clean up with water and the provided spill kit and wash your hands. Do not use bleach. Cap and secure collection tube tightly, then invert tube several times to mix. Wipe the outside of the tube with an alcohol wipe. Gently stretch the piece of parafilm, then stretch it around the tube cap tightly to prevent leakage. Wrap the tube in bubble wrap and secure with the rubber band. Then place the tube inside the swab Ziploc bag containing the absorbance paper. Then place the swab's Ziploc bag into the biohazard bag. Record the date and time of your nasal swab collection on the info card. Remove contents from the blood spot bag. Unfold the large tissue and place it on a clean level tabletop. Without touching the discs, pick up the blood filter paper. Draw an arrow pointing to the first disc you will apply blood to. Choose either your ring or middle finger to prick, then wipe it with the alcohol wipe. Twist off the cap of the lancet and pull it straight out. Place the lancet firmly on your chosen fingertip. Press it into the fingertip, then press the top button to puncture. Apply pressure near the puncture site to obtain a blood droplet. It helps to stand up and drop your arm downwards to move blood toward your fingertip. Avoid touching the discs as you carefully pick up the blood filter paper. Apply hanging blood drops to each disc until the disc is completely saturated on the front and the back. Saturate at least four, but preferably all six discs. Saturate each of the discs so that the front and the back contain blood. Then place the blood spot filter paper onto the tissue. Wipe the finger with gauze and apply a bandage. Dispose of the used gauze and wipes. Record the date and time of completed blood collection on the info card. Let the blood filter paper air dry on top of the tissue for two hours. 
Do not let it touch other surfaces. Place the used lancet into the large plastic tube with an orange cap. Place this tube and the info card into the biohazard bag. After fully air dried, put the blood filter paper into the provided BS filter Ziploc bag. Wipe the outside of the bag with a fresh alcohol wipe. With the blood filter paper inside, place the BS filter Ziploc bag into the biohazard bag. Wash your hands when you are finished. Note, please return this kit within 48 hours of receiving it. Press out any air from the biohazard bag containing your samples and used materials, then seal it. Place the biohazard bag in the original shipping box. Seal the box securely with packing tape included in the kit. Place the return shipping label over the original label on the box. For a FedEx pack return, these are your options. Give it to a FedEx truck driver, deposit it in a FedEx letterbox, drop off at Kinko's, drop off at FedEx stores, or drop off at Walgreens. Thank you for taking part in our study.